Hello everyone and welcome to Eat the Magic Escapade Edition, the little podcast thing we do here on the channel when we talk about news in the Disney world, and the Disneyland, and the Disney old TV specials. Yeah, because of quarantine, we can't really talk much about the parks, and we can't really do as many videos as we like. We just uploaded our second visit to Knott's uh, Berry Marketplace, which is actually pretty cute. Like, got some funnel cake, looked into stores. So yeah, check that out if we haven't yet. So it's kind of slim pickings right now in Southern California. Disneyland delayed their opening to date unknown. And we were supposed to be checking into the uh, Pop Century Resort or the All-Star Movies Resort this weekend, but coronavirus happened. Yeah, destroyed our summer repeat to the world of Disney World adventures thing i'm still kind of bummed out about that because i could be at disney world this weekend yeah we could be at disney world this weekend we could be at epcot we could be at spaceship earth i could be on Kilim, uh kilimanjaro not kilimanjaro the the safari one the board the watching animals poop yeah okay that's our sarcastic title for kilimanjaro safari is watching animals poop. it was kilimanjaro safaris i did say it right you made me think i didn't say it right because I, th I th thought you were going to say Expedition Everest. No. Because I, I know that's your go-to. I want to sit on a boring ride and look at animals poop. I like that ride. Because you get to see like real animals and animal stuff. for 17 hours to watch animals poop. Okay, so if you're going to go on Kilimanjaro safaris, do it in the daytime when... Morning. Yeah. When they're like up and doing stuff. Don't do it after midday. lunch because that was our mistake because it became like, let's watch animals poop. Mm-hmm. Because you have me on Kilimanjaro stuff where he's like going like, oh god! The good news is no matter what time you go, the giraffes are probably awake. They only sleep for like five minutes at a time. Gi giraffes are freaking crazy, weird, and terrifying if you actually think about it. Don't think about giraffes. Just don't. Don't do it. Stop doing it. Stop thinking about giraffes. Yeah, so sad we can't do Walt Disney World this weekend. Because like, yeah, we're looking forward to going back again. Like go on Rock and Roller Coaster. And I want to go on the good version of A Tower of Terror where you actually go into the fifth dimension. And I want to go to Sunshine Day Bar and drink more moonshine. But sadly, also this weekend, um, bars have closed in Florida. So even though Jock's Hangar opened like a couple of days ago, uh, there's also a prohibition location. rule. We have a whole review on that one as well. People yeah, know. we do have a Jock's Hangar bar. Like we didn't read all the drinks. I know I, we, I, I know we covered Anything Goes. I forgot what the other one was, but I, I did. A short round. I think, I, I think when was that a short, you had the anything goes and I think I had the short round or something like that. I can't remember. Yeah, because I think we went like full Temple of Doom on it. Mm -hmm. And there's also this Scottish professor, which was recommended to us. And I'm like, oh, oh hey, sure Sean all, Connery. I'm sure they're all great. I just, it's more the point of, it was the end of the day and. We just needed something to do like food. noms and like food. And I'm like, okay, let's uh, GTFO and just head back over to Port Orleans. Mm -hmm. After getting distracted by the awesomeness that is uh, Disney Springs, which is a maze in and of itself. If you don't know where you're going, we did not. Because I thought Disney Springs was going to be like linear, kind of like our downtown Disney out here. Like, no, I knew it was going to be much bigger and stuff, but I'm like, wow, it's like... We didn't know how much bigger. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty. It's nice, yes. It has the river going through it and... Whatever. Our uh, downtown Disney here in Anaheim, just after losing the AMC Rainforest and the ESPN Sport Zone, it's dead. Yeah. Because all there is is World of Disney and Sephora. Yeah. And a few, well, Earl of Sandwich is cool, but like, do, you, do I really want to drive all the way to downtown Disney on opening weekend just to go grab Earl of Sandwich? Well, I want to go there just to see what is open. And maybe do some bowling at Super Bowling or whatever it's called. Not a bowling type, and You're neither not. am I. Then I'm going to go to Star Wars Laser Land or whatever it's called. Or 3D Star Wars VR Laser Tag Stormtroopers TM. Well, we don't know what's going to be officially open for like opening weekend, reopening weekend for downtown Disney. It's like, eh, just wait and see. I'm not in too much of a hurry, and I... And the only parking lot that would be open for downtown Disney is the Symbol Lot. I'm not a huge fan of getting in and out of the Symbol Lot. That's why, like, okay, gonna... if we're going to do downtown Disney, park over Toy Story, spend a couple hours at the parks, chill at uh, downtown Disney, go back into two the parks. Symbol Lot's not that big a deal, in my opinion. Um, You're not the one driving. I understand that. 
but it's also the point that I don't know. I just want to see what the lines are like. I'm sure security is just going to be basically the same, but I'm curious if they're going to take any secondary precautions, etc. My curiosity is the bigger point here, less so than I need to go to downtown Disney to do something because there's nothing there I need to do. As much as I love La Brea Bakery, I don't really care that much to have to go back. Oh, I do like La Brea, Bakery. La Brea Bakery. I do like their breakfast menu. So yeah. maybe we'll stop by for breakfast or something. But that's a video for another time. Mm -hmm. Or we could do Earl of Sandwich. People keep telling us, like, yeah, Earl of Sandwich is awesome. I've never actually ate there. I Usually any time I pass by Earl of Sandwich, okay, I'll grab a lemonade and then I'll be on my merry way. Yeah, by the same person who, who helped create the Hollywood Cafe. The Planet, Planet Hollywood. Hollywood. That's what it's called. All right, let's talk about Ernest Goes to Splash Mountain. I know we've delayed on talking about the actual topic for most of this video. Don't all podcasts do that anyway? <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, it's, it's been a week, people. We're going to go and talk about not being able to go to Disney World because it makes us sad. And think about the good things at Disney World that we couldn't enjoy even if we were there, like Jock Singer. But yes, we watched Ernest Goes to Splash Mountain. This was a special they did in the late, late 80s. 80s. It was... I remember watching this on the Disney Channel. I think this also played on ABC. I wouldn't be surprised. Because I feel like I had seen this before. I know you showed this to me years ago. Because something, I think it was my, one of the, probably when I started doing my rant about how Splash Mountain needs to become Country Bear Mountain. You and can listen to that podcast um, previously, like in our Splash a, Mountain podcast last week. My whole rant week. is in, in the last week's yeah, podcast. And you had like your ideas on how to integrate Country Bears into the infrastructure and layout of Splash Mountain. Yeah. And we will get to what has now been chosen as the successor. It does irritate me. Only because my idea wasn't chosen, not because I disliked the idea. But this, I feel like I saw it. I, I Something inside me just tells me I did. It's a relatively short. It's only about a half an hour special. Uh, shorter than that if you cut out the commercials. And it's framed like it's a news story about... From Splash Mountain News Central. Yes. which Apparently I, Splash Mountain has like their own, own news group. Are you telling me that the people in the Okefenokee Swamp do not deserve to get news? That, that's pretty, like, coastal of you. Okay. Okie Finoki Swamp is where the stories are. It's, it's the setting. <laughs> Even though they say nothing about that area of, I want to say, Arkansas or Alabama. I don't know, somewhere in the south. <laughs> Sorry, I never read these books. I just know they have that because the word Okie Finoki amuses me. It's, it's, it, I understand I was gonna it. Say, like, okay, it's, it's probably a Native a American word, word that just means but like... But offensive. That means like something, but it's the Okie Finoki is the, is the name of it. It's, it's one of those Native American words. And to English speakers, it sounds a little funny. You know, like the other names, like Cucamonga and Seattle. It's a Simpsons joke. It's like Anyhow. how my fifth grade teacher thought, like, Roanoke was Ro Roanoke. Was Roanoke. Yeah, that's just more of a pronunciation thing and what have you. In Hoot. But yes, we have all sorts of weird locations that have odd names like that. And yeah. But it is done like that. It's, it's, it's very tongue-in-cheek, though, so it's not taking itself seriously at all. It's, it's clearly meant to be a comedy special. But Jay, tell us who this Ernest person is. Okay, for those of you too young to remember, or who have never seen any of the great movies he, that are featuring the Ernest character, like Ernest Scared Stupid and... Ernest Goes to Jail. Yeah, go to jail. Ernest Saves one, Christmas. And Saves Christmas. Probably the, probably the best trilogy. There's a bunch of others, but those are the ones to watch, I'd say yes. I haven't seen Ernest Saves Christmas in so long. Uh, the character began as a mascot for like a auto parts company. So you come on like, hey, you've learned, oh, you're working on your car. Let me try with these parts from such and such company. I can do to do to do to do. It was like that. And people really liked the character. And it was the 80s. And I guess there was a lot of cocaine flowing around. And people were like, we should just make this character more than just a uh, spokesperson for a company. And so then he got the movies. He eventually had a TV show. I remember loving that TV show as a kid. I have no idea if it holds up. I've never gone back and watched an episode of Hey Vern, It's Ernest. I do vaguely remember TV series, but I, I didn't watch it as a kid because I was kind of confused. Like, being five years like, wait, is the audience supposed to be Vern? Yes. Who's this Vern he's talking to? I want to see who this Vern yeah, is. Vern, Vern is always the audience. So it's the way it's the way it's um, structured. It's like a second person kind of uh, yeah. structure. Yeah. It'll be it, basically the camera is supposed to be the eyes of Vern uh, when, he, when it's doing that, like we did in the commercials, because it's always a first person camera moving around, and you are supposed to be Vern for whatever reason. 
And usually Ernest would get into some sort of misadventure through a massive misunderstanding because he's kind of an idiot. And that was kind of the joke of the commercials, too, that, like, you know, he's trying to fix your car. And don't have Ernest fix your car. Have, you know, Jiffy Lube or whatever he was the spokesperson for, you know, fix your car. Pep Boys or whoever it was. Don't get this guy. And so it kind of begins like it's a joke. He's just kind of this dumb guy who thinks he knows everything, you know, talks big, but doesn't really know what's going on. And, and in the special, you can very much get that. You don't have to be familiar with your Ernest character to really get what's going on. She'll see him doing his, like, training and stuff, and it's just slapstick humor of him hurting himself or breaking something or what have you. Because that's just kind of the humor that Ernest goes with. And all the reporters are like, oh, he's, like, the most well-trained uh, ride tester in all of America. And he's he's going to be the first man on Splash Mountain. And if he can survive this, then, you know, then we know it's, it's good to go, and we can open it to the public. She's like, I don't know. One one test run with one live person seems still doesn't seem like a great like, idea. We tested this with empty logs and sandbags, and Ernest P. Worrell is going to be the first man on Splash Mountain. Yep, Splashtronaut, I think they call him. Yes, they called him a Splashtronaut. I'm like, what? Because they're trying to be. It's it's the silliness and the absurdity factor. Uh, they do have a cute moment where one of the reporters is talking to an Imagineer and does not allow him to get a word in edgewise. And I, I feel sorry for the Imagineer because, like, okay, they said, like, they credit him as to the producer behind Splash Mountain. And I always like hearing from Imagineers. I always like listening how they talk and what kind of went into the thought process of what comes from how do you get from point A to having a full-fledged attraction. And then poor guy, because the woman just kept interrupting him and he could tell he was like really introverted and really shy. It's like, well, um, so-and-so like, oh, hey, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Well, one, that that's supposed to be the humor of it. You, you clearly did not get the joke of that scene. <laughs> no, but me, who likes learning about these things and hearing from engineer, uh, Imagineers, like, I want to learn more from this guy. Well, again, this is me screaming at the Indiana Jones special, where I'm like, no, I don't care about, like, oh, we went and found the actual temple and copied that. No, no, I don't want to hear that. I want to hear them talking about, like, how does the, you know, Mara face function and, and the ride track system, how does that, like, I want the technical stuff, and that wasn't the point of that special, nor is that the point of this special. They do talk about how it has 105, um, animatronic characters in there which is way more than i thought were in there they say it's the most it probably it probably was at the time not sure if it still is but that i don't know what ride would have more than 105 animatronic characters outside of maybe uh small world but you know they did uh, repurpose a lot of the animatronics from the old america sings into splash mountain yeah so they only had to probably produce the characters that were from uh the song of the south shorts um for those who don't know, Song of the South has two parts. as these live-action segments that are generally um, uh, not great. <laughs> they, they do not age well. And even at the time, uh, movie critics were not happy of those sequences. And audiences weren't really as well. And the other part of it is the stories that are being told, which are about the Briar Rabbit, Briar Bear, Briar Fox, which come from the old books. And those things are generally fine because they're just you know, silly cartoon animals doing silly cartoon animal stuff and teaching kind of a lesson. Um, I think those shorts they could probably put on, like, Disney Plus or something. I don't think anyone would uh, bother. There's, I know there's one particular short that does not age well whatsoever. Oh, really? It's Frere Rabbit and the Tar Baby. Okay. Um, did they that, actually that had to change that for Splash Mountain. Instead of the Tar Baby, they had to make um, Frere Rabbit um, into, into, like, this... Um, merging with a beehive type thing oh so he disguised himself to trick okay that's Ooh, okay okay i didn't know that was a thing i thought they. Just... i literally had to look this up because someone had mentioned like oh yeah they still have the tar baby scene in splash mountain I'm like wait wait let me look this up because i probably would would know if it was on splash mountain knowing how much trivia i know mm -hmm. and then i was just kind of like just reading up on this like oh they replaced the whole tar baby sequence with rare rabbit and like a honey hive Okay, because the story I, I know and I remember and is a major part of the ride is the whole, oh no, don't don't toss me in the river, I, I can't swim. And he's lying to them, and they're like, ha ha ha, we're going to toss you in the river for all the trouble you caused us. And then he just rides down the river back to safety, because um, that's how he tricked them that time. And that one's like, you know, like, oh, that's not offensive, it's just this rabbit getting into trouble and then tricking the bad guys to, you know, send him on his way home. But... 
Yeah, I didn't realize that was a thing. N you know, never mind. Let's just let's keep this as a cultural artifact for the sake of hey, this is how not teaching to tools. <laughs> yes, thank you. Well, like the reason why we still have copies of uh, Birth of a Nation around, it's not a point of like let's celebrate this. It's more a point of like this was made and we should learn from this and we should be glad we are no longer in this era. <laughs> So, yeah. Right, yeah, going back to the special. So the way it's framed is um, Ernest is doing these various stunts at his house. And he's like, okay, here I am, like, in my pool with floaties, just trying to see if I could handle um, the Splash Mountain. Here I am on a tire swing, and Vern is trying to spin me around to see if I could hand, like, handle, like, the forces of Splash Mountain. I like the uh, the dog sled, or whatever it was, the dog, dogs pulling the thing, and then they just pull up before he's ready. And you have like this countdown clock. You got to see the it's a visual thing, people. You actually have to see that one. It's streaming on YouTube. You can just look up Ernest uh, goes to Splash Mountain. I remember just as a kid, just kind of being a little bit confused because, again, even like as a little little kid, I kind of wanted to learn like behind the scenes. I kind of was also like as a five year old curious what song the South was all about because that it I felt understand. like it. Well, yeah, because of your family. <laughs> Because, like, I've never heard of Song of the South, like, who are these critters? And they do touch upon Song of the South for, like, maybe 30 seconds. Like, oh, it's based on the adventures of these critters. And you just kind of, like, just keep yeah, it at that Yeah, they back. focus on just the animated segments there. And that's what all the creatures in the ride come from. And, and, and then a bunch of also from America Sings. And, yeah, you're right. There's a little countdown thing because they're, they're, it's, it's building up the hype, the hype, the hype. Uh and then Ernest has like 12 minutes to get from wherever he is to, to Anaheim to specifically um, the front of the line of Splash Mountain. Which I guess if his massively reckless driving, because it's like, where's your friend Vern? He's like, oh, someone accidentally crashed his car. Anyhow, I'm here now. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I can't do And they parade him through like Main Street USA and, and then into like the queue for Splash Mountain. And you have, and then like, this one scared me as a kid. So you can see this on our title card here. Um, so they have all these uh, commercial break things with Ernest's mm -hmm. uh, face with his jaw wide open. I'm like, okay, I remember that face scaring me as a kid. Yeah, that's like an exaggerated... He already does exaggerated facial expressions. It's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why the character is memorable and one of the reasons why Jim Varney is just an incredible talent. God rest his soul. But that's like an extreme version of his extreme like mouth thing that that reminds me of the woody's mouth for or a toy, uh, toy story, story in, a, in, a, in, a, in japan japan yeah to look at that people that will terrify you and you'll never want to go on midway mania in japan you're gonna look at that and go no i'm good i'm no i'm yeah it's fine <laughs> i'm sure it's the same as what we have here except they're talking to me in japanese i'm gonna go on a different ride because yeah that's a bit of an extreme version of his face it looks like it's I would almost say Photoshopped, but obviously Photoshop really wasn't a thing in the 80s. But I, I think it's a tweak beyond like his standard facial thing. I think it's supposed to be him like going like, whoa, like his like, you know, I'm going down a big, you know, I'm going down the five story drop face. But yeah, um, I can see you being scared as a kid. Yeah, because remember, I was five years old and when this came out, I wasn't tall enough to go on Splash Mountain yet. <laughs> I know you laugh because I'm short. Well, hell, anytime we go on Splash Mountain, I always make a comment going like, are you sure you're tall enough? Of course I am. But any hoot. Short people jokes. <laughs> I'm 5'1", people. I used to do that to my friend who was 5'7". Don't worry about it. <laughs> you sure you're tall enough? So you have Ernest going on Splash Mountain and... Being the, ro the attraction snob I am, like, okay, they're doing this out of order. He's all really in it's the really mountain, weird. like, oh, and he's going to go for the first drop. They're kind of, like, doing, like, a sports, almost like a sports commentary thing on this. Like, yeah. um, Ernest is going for that first drop. And then I'm like, no, uh, that, I, I think the first drop is, F, is, like, right before you go inside and meet our animatronic friends. Yeah, you have, like, it goes up a little bit, you get the first drop, and you, and, which is really short. It's, like, the Pirates of the Caribbean drop or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then you... Yeah, you see the guys, you see some of the story going down. And you see him in a ventilator, like, after the first drop. Yeah, Ernest is, like, freaking out to a level that I'm like, okay, I get the point is that Ernest is kind of an idiot and overreacts and stuff like that. But okay, that scared me as a kid, because, like, okay, I don't want to die going on this. That's my thing I was going to go into. It makes it seem like 
you will die if you go on Splash Mountain. I'm like, well, that's not really a sales tool. That, if anything, makes pe people go like, no, that's cool. And the way they play the play the inside of Splash Mountain is really scary because they show you like just all like the darker stuff. It doesn't show you like it doesn't show you a lot of the happy stuff. Yeah. Because I know like okay, you're just showing this as a preview. You don't want to give away all spoilers. You don't want to do like a full on ride POV um, for your special because you're trying to like sell Disneyland tickets and you want don't want to give everything away. And just kind of like just looking at that as like, okay, this is a legit scary ride. Is this going to be anything like Mr. Toad's Wild Ride where I'm just going to be like sent to hell at the end? I don't know. So, and then like towards the end, you kind of see him almost corpse-like. Yeah, he's like catatonic or whatever when they pull him out. And of I'm the... like, you, you look Not. a lot like Mr. Ghost Host here. Like, you should be like hanging on the rafters at uh, the Haunted Mansion. And then he's just there, you know, when he's doing the little after thing, like, how oh, was it? And he's like, oh, you, there, eh, eh. And he's just making little noises like that. And then it's like, well, you're a hero artist. And he's like, thank you. And then just falls over. And then everyone charges into the queue. It's like, and yeah. they just let trample over, like, yeah, we're doing this. And I get the humor is that, you know, people are trampling over Ernest and what have you. But it's that point of like, Oh, the person who's the professional? Like, yeah, he just fainted from how intense this was. Let's all go on that. <laughs> and the ride itself is not particularly intense. Even the five-story drop doesn't really feel like a five-story drop. And I just got used to it. Um, Splash Mountain it has... It me out a lot more as a kid. As a, lot, as a kid, it felt endless. Mm -hmm. And then I remember, like, when I got into college, and I was like... Phew, phew. I thought that was longer. <laughs> it was a little because lower. I'm like, that was weird. Now, now, nowadays, I can actually time myself when I have to make my Splash Mountain um, pose. Mm-hmm. And like, okay, I know what pose I'm doing this time around. <laughs> Splash Mountain has like a special special place in my heart for me because it was like my first thr thrill ride um, when I was of height. Because <laughs> I remember like, yeah, I originally didn't want to go on it because of this special. Like, no, I don't want to be catatonic after I leave the log. <laughs> but I saw like this other special. It was also on ABC. It was the Walt Disney World Splash Mountain. And it looks like they were doing a special for that one that tied in, I think, with an Easter special. And had, like, a bunch of kids who were, like, my age. Or slightly older. Like, probably a little older. Probably a little if were, older. If you were, like, five or six, then I would have I was, like, eight um, at, at the time when, when I was age. of height. And it's, like, they were, like, maybe, like, 10, 12 years old kind of thing. And then it shows, like, all these kids, like, on the log. And they're going, going like, hey, this isn't scary. Zippity doo da laughing place, blah, blah, blah. Shows all the happy animatronics. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be like, okay, if these kids can do it and live, so can I. So parents and I, we, we uh, went to Splash Mountain 93, and then I, I just loved it. It's like my first th thrill ride, and I still had the photo of me um, going down like um, Splash Mountain <laughs> when I was like eight years old. And you're trying to fight off the flies. So, I would be shocked, um, and I didn't take a look at the credits, but I, I feel like if we looked at the credits, I would be shocked if Jim Barney's name is not in the writing credits. Not only because Ernest is acting or very Ernest-like, but a lot of the stuff feels like the humor, and probably the humor very similar to Hey Vernon's Ernest. I bet if I watched through that, we'd find very similar clips, like the, you know, uh, tongue-in-cheek but very serious reporter, the person talking over the other person, the, uh, you know, Ernest getting overwhelmed by something that, you know, a kid can handle. But it, the thing is that I think if I was at Disneyland, I guess at the eighties, it would be uh, that would be Eisner era. Yeah, that would be eighty nine with this. Uh, Which I guess era. probably wouldn't be the person who'd be directly in charge of this. It'd probably be whoever was the parks manager at the time. I don't know who that is. My Disney history is Eisner great and folks. Wells, I believe. If I was that, I'd have watched it and go like, okay, this is great. Except for now, you made it seem like our ride is like the most terrifying thing in the world, and it's it's not. It's it's fun, happy singing, southern animals, and then you know a big drop. Yeah, because when Ernest goes through the mountain, it's almost like that scene in Willy Wonka where they're going through scary yes. boat ride. Scary boat ride. Probably lots of great. That's a very good simile for those two. And I'm like, but it's happy music. It's like, how do you do? Like, oh yeah, fine, thank you. Hi, possums. How are you? Hi, Florida State State animal. It's a bit of an Easter egg. I don't, I don't know if it's hmm. on our mountain. I just learned mm -hmm. about this. Like, was learned reading up on Splash Mountain like uh, trivia. There's an FSU um, animatronic oh, that's cute. cheering for F F FSU. In like amongst the, they better keep that in the remake or the rethink. Uh, 
overall, like I said, it, it's a fine enough special. You can get a couple chuckles out of it. It's not like you know groundbreakingly funny or anything like that. But uh, it seems like an odd marketing tool. I said the first time I saw this, I want to say like five years ago or something, whatever it was when you first showed it to me. And after you know watching it again, I'm like, yeah, still isn't that great of a marketing tool because like if you go to some of the other specials we've watched, you go to the Indiana Jones one, you know, at the end of it, you have uh, John Reese davies and uh, Karen Allen getting off the thing like, whoa, that was intense. Want to go again? Yeah. And like really excited about going on, you know, Temple of the Forbidden Eye again. Uh, if you go to like the Star Wars thing, you see all the, you see some clips of the footage and it makes it seem really super exciting to get into a star speeder. I think it was a 3000 back in the day before they reject, reduced it to a 1000 for some reason. And you could go on your Star Speeder 3000 and you could go and, you know, it looked exciting and fun. And we've seen other specials that make the rides seem exciting and fun, even if they over-exaggerate them, like the, uh, uh, whatever the anniversary special we end up watching, which we did the discussion here, where Tony Danza's on the uh, Jungle Cruise and, like, everyone is being eaten by the animals. As I this. love that one with, it, uh, with uh, Tony Flesher, voice of Roger Rabbit as the uh, Jungle Cruise guy. Jungle Cruise guy. And we haven't actually reviewed that for the oh, show. I thought we did review that for the show. We'll, we'll have to do a we show for 35th. We watched it recently. I thought we watched it so we could review it. We watched it so we could review it, but we were also distracted by just some other ancillary videos that followed after. Uh, was it one of like, those? Like uh, this making of Star Tour starring Ernie Reyes Jr. Which we didn't actually review. I just yelled about it from across the room while you were playing different specials, and I was probably working on a Gumpla kit or something. Uh so yeah, we, we should definitely talk about that one. That one, that one is great. That's my favorite out of all the it's anniversary double specials. Double we do not have a... No, we do not have a, the 35th. Remember, I edit all these and upload them to YouTube, so I do all the cataloging. Okay. But we've seen a lot of the specials that always make things fun and whatever. I mean, even, like, to just reference the 35th again, you have a part where Woody from Cheers is having a flashback about being a little kid and being scared to go in the Haunted Mansion and then meeting a cute girl and having a fun time on the Haunted Mansion. And... Is, you know, it brings up the scariness of the Haunted Mansion, but then also brings up the fact that, no, it's it's fun. It's a party at the end. It's a swing and wake, and, you know, we're all going to have some fun ghost puns and Always stuff Always like look on the bright side of death. So, usually the specials do that. Even if something's supposed to be scary or intimidating, they find a way of saying, no, but it's also fun. Don't worry. Like, you're, you're going to have a great time. And then this one is like, <laughs> Ernest nearly died on this ride. Have fun, children. <laughs> And I think that was probably the one direction they should have gone there, where where they should have gone with Ernest, like, initially being really like, oh, man, Vern, I didn't tell them. I'm not really a specialist at this. I just wanted to go on first. And then he goes down the first bump. He's like, oh, he's like, oh, freaks out. Like, overly freaks out. It's like, oh, uh-huh. well, if that was just five stories, that, what, what do you mean that was only the first drop? <laughs> you know, something like that. And then, and you could have done something funny that where, like, he was actually lying the whole time about being a specialist. And then on the right, like every little thing's making him freak out, you know. But but then he cuts to it, and it's you know, how you do, do to do to do 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 to do, wonderful day, and you know he's like overreacting to stuff. And you could build some humor out of that instead of like, he's so terrified he's basically in a coma by the end. That I'm like, it doesn't work because an Ernest scared stupid, he fought a troll monster and then danced with a troll monster and didn't seem to have too many problems. <laughs> I'm not saying that there's a continuity in the Ernest verse, but I would just like some like, you know, consistency, consistency with his character. Because I remember I, not liking Ernest, Ernest like Ernest during this not. era, during 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 the late '80s. But I remember really liking the scared, stupid movie because I saw that with my grandma, and I had a great time with it. Yeah, it, it's a great, it's fun, and it, uh, and it holds up for being like a fun kids Halloween movie. Because you know you have the, the trying to figure out what the monsters are. The, the deaths aren't, like, too violent or gross. There's a lot of Ernest being, you know, silly. And Ernest is, like, friends of a bunch of kids, which kind of makes sense because he's just basically a kid as an adult. <laughs> but I just think they could have done something a little bit better there at the end because it doesn't make me say, oh, man, let's go on Splash Mountain now. After I watch this, it's like, man, that ending kind of is off-putting. <laughs> but overall, as a special, I think it was, it was pretty good. I'm surprised he didn't bring up any of his other, like, you know, Jim Varney wasn't playing other people in the special, or if he was, I guess I am too visually impaired to have noticed. Nah, uh, it was just him. Unlike the uh, 30th anniversary special, where For he Fletcher was a uh, plays like half the characters, and Jim Varney was playing um his 
Oh, his father. Yeah, he in played the his flashback. father, and he played uh, adult Ernest, and then Ernest's dad in the flashback. Yeah, which because that's what he used to do in like the TV shows. He'd play. He had different. You know, is Jim Varney dressed as different people to be you know the mailman or whatever? When they did, when he can act off the you know like himself that way versus like his barber who is just some other guy. And now he's Slinky Dog in Toy Story. And he has passed, I believe. Rest in peace, Jim Varney. Not because of Splash Mountain, but much after. Like I said, he's a very talented guy. He was able to do a lot of different voices and things like that. And then I'm looking at this special and I'm like, this, uh, like, I feel like there should have been a second draft of that script. Just because I feel like the ending could have been handled a little bit better. But overall, you know, it's a cute, fun special. And Ernest was popular at the time. And why not get some little... We'll get a corporate synergy there, getting the, you know, I'm, I'm sure the Ernest TV show was probably on ABC, or maybe the movies were handled by Touchstone or something like that. I, I don't know. That was but, also during a time when Eisner was trying to get, like, just a very different, like, IP that kids were into uh, that wasn't quite Disney to just synergize with the park stuff. That's true, too. So I do appreciate for all those kind of things. I just kind of wish the ending had been handled in a way that makes it seem like it's fun. Or, or he is like that. And then as you go through the zippity doo section at there at the end, he's like, huh? Huh? Yeah! yeah. Or, or he's a little bit dazed or whatever, and they pull him out, and he's like, and then he suddenly is like super confident guy again, like, yeah, it's the best ride I've ever been on. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to go on again. Who wants to go with me? And then him with the huge crowd jump right on the, the log again, because he needs to, like, you know. Because, yeah, that's when he just comes out. I'm like, is this Mr. Gracie? Did they pull his body from the rafters? So it's... That's that's my point of view on it. I think he should have immediately snapped out of it as soon as the mic was in his face because it's like, oh, microphone, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I was the video. It was easy breezy, super great. Yeah, come on, everyone, let's go on again. And he jumps on and see him for a bunch of people. Yeah, and then it could have been on like more of a triumphant note instead of him being trampled after passing out, which is not great. And I don't find that funny either. I'm like, ah, it's funny that person's being trampled. Like, I find the funny of, like, you know, when he's being dragged by the dogs or when he gets spun around on the wheel, to, on the, the tire too fast. The physical comedy stuff to me was funny. Even, like, I even got a couple chuckles out of the uh, reporter interrupting the Imagineer. But, like, Ernest just being, like, horribly traumatized by Splash Mountain is not funny to me. And I'm kind of like, I... But this is bad advertising for your ride. Now, if let's just put this in a different light. Let's say this was the... Um, California screaming, then maybe you wouldn't want to do that because then it's like, oh man, California screaming is gonna be so intense. Like, you know, you know, Ernest couldn't handle it. I mean, obviously those are two different eras because he was always wasn't doing the Ernest character in you know the early two thousands when uh, California Adventure opened. Ooh, or you could have used uh, that guy from How I Met Your Mother. What's his name? Bob Saget because he does the voice for the ride. So since Bob Saget was the voice of California Screamin', you should have gotten Bob Saget to, to do the special for, Cal for California Screamin'. That would have been really great. And I clearly did not mess that up on purpose as a joke at all. Anywho, so let's talk about like what's actually going to be coming to Splash Mountain. And we got the news uh, yesterday that Splash Mountain on um, both coasts, Disneyland and Walt Disney World, specifically Magic Kingdom, um, it's going to be transformed into a Princess and a Frog theme attraction. So let's get a few things straight here because I've been seeing a, people making a lot of assumptions. One, it looks like they're going to keep the right infrastructure because when they release the uh, concept design, it still looked like the same structure as Splash Mountain. Well, changing it would be massively expensive. You can't really... It's a, it's a really good infrastructure, and why waste that infrastructure? Also, it's iconic, as for a while it was the highest, and now it's now second highest, log flume in the world. So why would you get rid of this? Um, unless you're going to modify it to make it a six-story drop, I don't entirely know what your plan is to do modifications on it. I mean, characters and stuff, we can get the theming in a section. But I mean, in terms of changing... The, the flume part of the ride, that would just be really stupid because it's this iconic kind of ride and to have to lose that would be a really bad choice. The second po point is, it looks like the change, the transition to turn Splash Mountain into Princess and the Frog has been discussed with within like the Disney Imagineering Company for the past year because when they release that concept art, it looks super detailed. That's something that you, you can't finish in like less than a week and a half. Yeah, they were discussing this before it became a major internet topic, for sure. I'm sure they've been discussing this for a while, so I'm sure there's been 
several different ideas evidence passing around. Evidence that backs us up, anecdotal evidence that backs us up, a lot of cast members just kind of been going on record like, yeah, the ride's been needing a refurb for like the longest time. Some of the animatronics aren't up to what they used to be because, again, a lot of these animatronics, at least in the Disneyland one, were repurposed from America Sing. So you're dealing That's... with animatronics from Ooh. the 70s. Yeah, that is, that is pretty old tech there. And we compare it to the likes of the animatronics, of what they're capable of now. Like, example, the Frozen ride in Epcot, um, what they're going to do with Beauty and the Beast in Tokyo. Uh, look, honestly, you can just go to Rocket Raccoon for uh, Escape from the Tower of Terror. And in that one, Rocket Raccoon seems like he's, like, there should be someone down there uh, muppeting, puppeting, I guess puppeting the creature, not a muppet, puppeting the, uh, the rocket the entire time. And it's not. It's all animatronic, and it just seems like he just... There's this real-life raccoon man, like, telling you how to save uh, his friends. And that's a capability of Disney animatronics now. And when you kind of look at look at Splash Man, like, yeah, it's all cute. Like, you see the kittens, like, at the end, right before you go to the showboat. So you go, oh, my God, it's so cute. But at the same time, like, a lot of the animatronics and a lot of technology is very dated. So there's been a lot of talk amongst, like, cast members who handle maintenance, who handle, who worked around Splash Man. It's like, yeah, there's been a lot of talk about doing a refurb or a rehash of this attraction for like the longest time we just haven't gone around it because it's a low, low priority because you have people being hyped up for avengers campus you have like yeah, I mean, the rumors of charland like being um f fixed up and all or splash mountain is just kind of like a tertiary kind of um afterthought and it's not till now um the walt disney company says like hey uh here's our concept art that we've been working on for the past year to retheme splash mountain to uh princess and the frog like I said, I think they've been, this has been on the, I think if we had any insiders, they would definitely say, yes, we've been working on this for five, six years of just, what about this series? What about this movie? What about that? You know? Um, and knowing and, how the Imagineering company works, they always like just have parking lot ideas, like just brainstorm ideas that never really come to fruition. Oh yeah. They just kind of like of just them. are on the back burner. It's like, okay, we'll revisit this when the timing is right. Or if there's a project that fits with it, because I'm pretty sure that Imagineers have like volumes worth of attraction ideas that are in consideration or never even see the light of day. Or even stuff that's like, I think this would be a great way to, to adjust this old dark ride, except for the cost and time and stuff is not really feasible at the time, especially when you drop like, say, a billion-ish dollars on an unnecessary expansion. Uh, when you do stuff like that, it sometimes screws up being able to do things that have needed to be done for years now. And I'm perfectly fine with this. I like the fact that this wasn't just a, oh my gosh, we saw five people on the internet say Princess and the Frog and therefore we're going to do it because that would seem like a really horrible marketing strategy. And that they've been thinking about this clearly. They're trying to keep the Southern stuff there because a lot of the Southern-y stuff can remain. You're going to have to take out a lot of those hundred and some animatronics and replace them with characters the Princess and the Frog. Um, but you already have songs from that. You can have like the fun, uh, going down for you. Yeah. You have that song. And at the end you can have the, uh, the, that reach love of heart. Yeah. Something like that. Yes. I like that song. So you already have your songs. You can already insert in there. Um, and you can have like Tiana and Naveen and friends, like just kind of like on a showboat type, type thing, just mm -hmm. kind of waving, waving to the people, to the, to blowing everyone. kisses. And you know, for the fall, you could even have Dr. Facilia go like, oh, I got you now, or something like that. And then, you know, you go down the, the fall. You could, you could find a way to put everyone in there relatively easily. Uh, I'm going to miss those uh, crows. or Buzzards. Or buzzards. Yeah, I'm going to miss those guys. Those guys are kind of fun because they're just like talking crap on you the entire time. Like, oh, man, get with you to well, die. Well, better they talk you. crap than to crap. That's true. You'd go right under them. That would be really bad. So I'm like, in terms of replacing animatronics, that would work really, really well. Like I said, you already have songs, so you don't have to worry about that. And you're still keeping the Southern theming without, you know, uh, I mean, not that you need to keep the Southern theming. There's no reason to keep the th Southern theming. Well, think about like but. where each mountain is located within each part of the park. For our park in Anaheim, it's a really nice transition between New Orleans Square and to Critter Country. A lot of people are saying like, oh, does that mean they're going to expand New Orleans Square? I'm like, nah, keep no. Critter Country. I like Critter Country. It's it's nice and cozy and we need a pool lives there. And if they did, they'd have to change everything. And look, Hungry Bear is one of the best kept secrets. I know everyone knows about Hungry Bear. No one really goes there. It always seems quiet and chill. Also, we always Columbia sit in the quiet and, and chill, chill cannibal side. At you. Columbia shooting a cannibal. Um, we'll get to that in a second. Um, I do have some th thoughts on that. What was what ancillary ideas people have oh, and yeah. also in magic kingdom 
you also have uh, Splash Mountain is located in Frontierland. I can let it pass. Which is kind of close to Liberty Square. Yeah, it's like right so, next door to Liberty Square. So, so you kind of have like this works. transition-y type of thing. But then again, a lot of people... I, I'm still, sometimes I admit, I, I wrap my head, okay, Pirates of the Caribbean is an adventure land. But like, okay, adventure land is like whatever whatever adventure you want it to be. Yeah. But it, it's a different type of adventure land, though it does have most of the same rides. But because they don't have a New Orleans Square, you know, they have Liberty... Square. Square. So it's a square regardless. Uh, and they have different ships, too, because they don't have the Mark Twain. They have the Liberty Bell. And I don't think they have the Columbia at all. Or no, they do Col- not have Columbia. Columbia, Columbia is exclusive to yeah. us. They only have one boat? Yeah. Oh. And you said you'd, uh, your preference is Liberty Bell. Um, only because it's narrated by Samuel Clemens. Because Yeah, I find that clever. South reasons. Yeah. Um, I just find that clever, clever. So that's just kind of my thing of like... Mark Twain is just, you know, older man voice. And, and it's then, cool, too, because when you pass by Tom Sawyer Island, you actually do see references to the books there. Because yeah. I had to do a double take. Why is that fence, like, half, half painted. painted? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so brilliant. Uh, I like the fact that, yeah, the Tom Sawyer Island has Tom Sawyer references. It's, it's a clever idea. And as I said, I like Samuel Clemens. Oh, I'm Samuel Clemens. I'm just a regular old... Uh, boat hand well i'll tell you a little bit about these rivers and about some americana and i'm like yeah i, I think that's clever because that's what that was his job that was his side hustle when he wasn't writing books and because we already have a steamboat kind of there in liberty square and it's close enough to liberty square i'm like this kind of works it feels a little weird but i'd also point out that like the south isn't the frontier like ever unless you're talking about the southwest which is very different and there's so many like um cowboy-ish themed uh, log flume rides that doing yet another one would just be silly. Plus, Disney hasn't had a cowboy-themed property in a long time that's been successful. Because they had the Lone Ranger, which was... Uh, calling that thing awful is an insult to things that are actually awful. It's like a level below awful. Like, it's unwatchable. I really had high hopes for Lone Ranger, but like, uh, no. I liked, well, I when I heard they're going to make one, I'm like, oh, that'd be so cool. Yeah, I'd want a new action, you know. I want it to be what Wild Wild West could have been, and instead it was more like Wild Wild West than I really wanted it to be. With with uh, White Guy as Indian. That's always it's always good. Is it bad I kind of watched the again? <laughs> we made that in the 21st century. Could, could, could have made Johnny Depp the Ranger. And then just gotten a Native American person. That wouldn't have been impossible. There are Native American actors. A lot of them, in fact. Um, or we could get Army Hammer, who was a good enough actor and who's fine as the Ranger, but and then put a white guy as this, the Native Americans. It's good. It's good. Hey. Disney, we're super woke, bros. Totally. <laughs> Check out the Lone Ranger. Super woke <laughs> that we have to set the alarm clock 10 minutes. Any hoot. <laughs> Hey, if the company's going to try to, like, give themselves this air of we're super whatever, and I'm going to point out that, like, not too long ago you were doing crap that says otherwise, yeah, I, I'm going to point out that hypocrisy because hypocrisy bothers me. Is not is that right, uh, Finn? And your I treatments like on Finn. the poster and in the movies. Finn, you had so much potential. No, I we're super. Yeah. We, we, we love all races equally. We totally do. Mm-hmm. They just did Finn dirty. Like, I, I was standing you, Finn. <laughs> No, everyone liked the character. That's that's the that was the everyone's favorite character out of Force Awakens, and then yeah, we're gonna cut him out of the posters and make his role in the movies into guy who yells and waves his arms around. Anywho, that's another discussion yeah, for another podcast I get, I for another salty. fandom. <laughs> I get salty, but mm, want some margaritas with that. Overall, I think this is gonna be a good transition for Splash Mountain. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I like the songs from Princess and the Frog. Um, I kind of want to watch it again. <laughs> I've only seen it once, and I don't have like a huge like, oh my god, I love this movie kind of thing for me. But I will say, Tiana is I've, I've established her as my second favorite princess, and uh, Doctor Facilier is probably in my top five villains just because he's so stylish, and style will go a long way in my book. I also like the fact when we are at Villains Night, I like that line when Doctor Facilier oh. goes up to Hades, and then Doctor Facilier is well, I got friends on the other side. Hades goes. I rule the other side, and I've never heard of you. I love that comeback. <laughs> really worth doing Villains Night in, in Walt Disney World uh, Magic Kingdom. 
Uh, R.I.P. Villains Night. Doesn't have one this year, but next year, hopefully it'll be back with the same show. Um, I also liked when we did uh, Not So Scary Halloween over here, and there was the, one of the candy paths. Oh, yeah, there. when he did like this is all like a his cabaret his stick, kind of has, thing. This is weird little like, skeletons in the background going like, come on, come on. I have magic you've never seen. <laughs> it was like, this is freaking great. And then um, our, our friend Jeremy... Uh, ended up having like a conversation, like got distracted from the candy line to have like an argument with him. Or something. Yeah, and our friend Jeremy was costing as Mario, and it was, was amazing. It was great. That was a fun group. That was actually yeah. It was, was one of the more fun. One of our friends, Jeremy, was cosplaying as Mario, and he was like just challenging like every face character to a wrestling match, and that was awesome. Yeah, despite some of the health issues that ended up hitting me partway through the night, which was unfortunate, um, it was actually one of my more more enjoyable and memorable experiences doing Halloween. And I wish we could do it again this year, but we cannot. Uh, not on the not on the the uh, East Coast, but I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. Be Halloween here. They, I don't think they're going to do Oogie Boogie Bash. When, they haven't announced yeah, it officially. Or Oogie Boogie Bash, that's what they called it. Thank you. They changed the name. Uh, because this is normally when tickets go on sale right now. Uh, yes. So yeah. uh, right now I'd be getting tickets. I'd be calling up my cast member friends. Like, Yo, what's the discount? Yep. So because of that. It's, it's sad, all the all of those cool events we normally would want to talk about on this podcast are no longer there. Because uh, our friend Candace, she really wanted to do Villain Sight with us, and I told her, like, yeah, let me just wait for my next paycheck and I'll grab grab tickets. And thankfully, I didn't get the tickets for Villain Sight because she's still waiting for her refund. Oh, wow, I didn't realize that. Mm-hmm. Oh. Because, like, I was going to grab them, but I had a meeting when they kind of went on. It's like, okay, I'll just wait for my next paycheck. It doesn't look like it's going to sell out anytime soon. It's like, And when my next paycheck came, that's when coronavirus happened. Yeah. So, okay, I think we've covered Oh, uh, one more thing, because this is a food channel. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to address something, because I know all of us like to armchair engineer. And I know like a lot of us would like to actually go to a Tiana's Palace one of these days, Tiana's place. I was, I was building towards that, yeah. And I don't know how you vision this, Jay, but this is how I vision a Tiana's uh, place dining experience. So a lot of Tiana's uh, motivation in the movie is she wants to set her own restaurant. And when you see the visuals for it, and when you see like what she envisions and what she wants it to be, it's a beautiful place. Yes. It's like, I don't want quite say a high-end restaurant but it has like all these aesthetics it has all these like 1920s just kind of kind of feel to it it really is like a jazz kitchen if you will but just done up very elegantly and she wants to just be like this restaurateuse if, if you will yeah more than just the gal who makes the beignets and beignets are delicious but yeah. she wants to this is her dream her dream initially yeah she, she doesn't want to be a princess like yeah i have this dream I want to have my own establishment. So that's like her MO like throughout throughout the course of the movie. A lot of people online from like the Anheim side saying like, let's uh, refurb Country Bear, not Country Bear, uh, Hungry, Hungry Bear, Bear, and turn that into Tiana's pal- Palace. No. Let's refurb French Market, Cafe Orleans, and turn that into Tiana's Place. I'm not as against that. But do you really want Stouffer's to be a sponsor? Uh, oh, absolutely Stouffer? not. Okay. No. <laughs> I want legit Southern food is what I want. That's the reason I would want that. I don't want to lose Hungry Bear because Hungry Bear is like my secret. It's my laughing place. Uh, thank you, phone or whatever that was. Uh, because from my, one, it's my brother's favorite uh, restaurant for a while when he was little, you know, because little kids like, you know, you get the chicken fingers, you can get the burgers, whatever. But the thing is, you can go get yourself a burger, you can get yourself a funnel cake, and you can just kind of be under one of the umbrellas and just relax, look at the rivers of America, occasionally get blasted with a cannonball. seating zone that I like sitting at, where it's very nice and quiet, you can see the rivers of America, you can just kind of like just stare out for like a little bit, just kind of like just mentally unwind. And if you're like, if you, you're the type of person who just kind of gets overwhelmed by the crowds at Disney... Or like just any of the Karen, or you can feel like Karen energy just kind of getting to you because I know it gets to me sometimes. No, yeah. I just kind of like just sitting there and just kind of like, okay, I can just mentally unwind. I can just mentally kind of recharge my batteries and just kind of enjoy the sights and hear a cannon go boom. Yeah. And wave to people on the Mark Twain while I'm enjoying a chicken sandwich, a funnel cake. It's one of the few places that really does kind of have that quiet, peaceful atmosphere. 
almost anywhere else there's something going on. You, you can't, as much as I like... I'd argue a Harbor ga- ga- gallery, ga- gallery also uh, has that feel too. Yeah, because but you're like way off in this like... But it's kind of corner. have a small seating place. Yeah, it's a small seating place and you're kind of off like the beaten path a little bit. And when, um, when Tuttle Hideaway wasn't shaped. there, when it was just like extra seating and it still had the Aladdin theming to it, that was also like one of my favorite quiet places to just kind of mentally unwind and just... Oh, have there, a safe space from the Karens. There are locations like that around the park and what have you, but like to have a restaurant or fat, quick service, that's really more of a quick service, where you can just get your food, sit down and just breathe and not have to have you know music blasted in your ear the whole time or a parade going by or whatever. There aren't that many locations like that. And if that becomes Tiana's you know uh, food shack, then we're stuck with everyone wanting to check that out. It is no longer the chill place. And it's probably not... Here's my issue with uh, Anaheim. I am not expecting any authentic Southern cooking in Anaheim. Uh, as much as I like French markets, there's very little there that I would say is it's authentic Southern. It's not right Southern. Jared. I know. And that's why. Uh, and look, I like Cafe Orleans. I will get my, uh, my Monte Cristo. It is a delicious heart attack as a sandwich. And I love it. And I reviewed it. And I'll have it again. But the thing is... If I'm going to have a southern place, I want a southern place where like 50% of your ingredients is butter. And the other 50% is sugar. And then the remaining 50% is made up of actual food pieces. That's how southerns, southerners cook. So when I look at the, the restaurants like the... good southern barbecue. Like so when I look at the, uh, <laughs> the way the layout is for Hungry Bear, French Market, Cafe Orleans, they're too small and it doesn't do Tiana's vision justice. I was thinking because our downtown Disney here in Anaheim needs more life breathed oh my into God, it. it does. Yes. I was like, okay, hey, have partner up with Jazz Kitchen and turn that into Tiana's Palace, and you can also keep the quick service uh, section of that where you can pick up your beignets and still theme it to Princess and the Frog. Yeah, at least you get your your fried food and what have you, and a few other you know, southernish kind of things, or more southern than you would get from Stouffer's. Because when I think of Tiana's. Pa- Place. I keep saying palace. <laughs> if it is palace, do, you, do you forgive me. Uh, it's just been a while since I've seen Princess and the Frog. Um, it's when I when I envision it, it is a sit down restaurant. It's not a quick service where you can just like just go up to the counter, order your meal, put it on a tray, and find find a seat for yourself. Yeah. No, this is like waiter checks you in. You sit down. Maybe there's someone on there. Maybe an alligator playing the saxophone. She wanted some, Yeah, she wanted something a bit more. Uh, classy than, you know, the kind of place she was working at. She wanted to be a step above that. She didn't need to be, you know, uh, the Blue Bayou, but she needed to be a level above, you know, Beignet Baker at this greasy... I can't call it a greasy spin, because it was not a greasy spin. It's not a good description. But like a... Kind of the small, nothing, you know, restaurant place. And also when you're thinking about theme park, um, theme park food... And this is something I learned after watching a video about this one theme park in Florida that tried too hard to cater to like be like an authentic Chinese experience and just ignore like the needs and wants of 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 tourism because like I hate to say it like you're gonna have you're gonna need a burger and fries place because kids aren't gonna need, are are gonna want their burgers and fries like or chicken fingers or whatever. I'm I'm all about like exploring new foods like. If you and I had little humans or we ended up taking our nieces and nephews to Disney, of course we'd be the parents that we were like, hey, here's a, yeah, tr- tr- try this, tr- tr- try this. But every now and then, like, okay, chicken chicken, chicken nuggies is a safe bet. Yeah. And, and, there's a, and there's several places you can go. And that's what always be the counter. But there's plenty of other locations. I'm like, I understand that. But, like, sometimes the kid is hungry now. You just got off of... Uh, Winnie the Pooh, and now the kids, well, I want lunch. And now you can go directly to the Hungry Bear, get them chicken fingers, or get them a burger, or something simple. And, and I kind of feel happy. like you need to stay, a Disney, or Disneyland Park here staggers each restaurant with that sells those types of food enough where, yeah. yeah, you can grab a burger, Hungry Bear on the side of the park. You can grab a burger over in Fantasyland. You can grab a burger over at Galactic Grill. Yeah. Like, you kind of have, like, Ooh. that evened out bit. Okay, this isn't quite your vision, mm-hmm. but if they needed to make it in park, you know it's a place they could use a retheming and no one would care? The former location of Young's. That little snack oh, shack. Oh, Chick Door Trap Trap Tower. Whatever the heck it's called now. Um, 
that place could be redone because it's in fantasy land that kind of ties into the whole you know magical but i know it's not near the, the ride but it doesn't need to be near the ride technically i mean it helps but you know it doesn't necessarily need to be and i think you could add that could work because like yes it's a it's a quick stop and whatever but if you made it like a you could get some barbecue ribs you could get beignets you could get uh I'm trying to think of like the stuff that's not too off the wall because like catfish would be you need a bigger place to make some good catfish that ain't, that ain't gonna work there um hush puppies i guess you could sell hush puppies there uh maybe a little barbecue chicken or maybe some rotisserie chicken maybe you get some options there and you could and you could probably make it in a smaller location like that it's not really i mean you'd have to probably do some obviously some construction would have to be done and it wouldn't be like the most way of honoring I, th I think again a re theming jazz kitchen or something like that's a great choice or just making an original restaurant in downtown disney might be a good idea give people we, a reason we have to that go space there. now yeah i want jock's hangar bar to replace rainforest cafe that would be wonderful i would i would very much be happy of that so honestly I, I think the downtown disney idea is the best but if i can do that you can again there's, we got that place right by small world that needs to be that could be themed into something and it'd be fine. I still need to try their baked potato because I heard a load of baked potato was really good. But hopefully when things get better, give the baked potato a try. Um, and over in Walt Disney World, I know there's been talk of having a Princess and the Frog themed uh, character dining over in at the Reflections Lodge. Oh yeah, we've been hearing that since for a while but now. Yeah. Not going to lie, like all resort construction is going to be delayed. Oh yeah, this, this year is a wash for any kind of development in theme parks. But, there's probably some stuff they're doing inside the parks, but there is, there's no big expansions when you can't bring in a whole crew to build something. But I was quite surprised because I thought it would be a great fit over in um, any of the Port Orleans resorts. That's what it seems like the obvious place to put it. Yeah, like have it have a, T a Tiana's Palace or a character dining experience over either either Port Orleans resorts because the story behind um, Riverside is that this is Tiana's like home and she also has a vacation home for her Disney princess friends. And there's a whole building for that one where you can stay in those specialized rooms. Which is kind of cool for anyone who wants to drop the money on princess room. Or anyone who's lucky enough to get like an upgrade. Yeah. I try to. <laughs> Any upgrades but yes, it's absolutely my first not visit. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not <plan. laughs> Get in the, oh, now I'm sounding like the, uh, the lady from uh, Monsters, Inc. Welcome to Port Orleans. <laughs> Sign up properly. Well, yeah, I, I really I liked uh, Port Orleans, uh, Riverside. Um, but we've been told that Port Orleans um, French Quarter is also, is an also nice one to stay at. And I know for Halloween and special events, they do have Princess and the Frog characters run around the uh, property. Because I remember like seeing photos from this year's Mardi Gras. Like, oh my god, Louis running around with an alligator. I want to give him a hug. I love Louie. And yes, I would figure, you figured they'd try to do some sort of thing like that. I think they wanted Reflections to get a little more uh, families going there. That would this be my true. guess. Because it is going to be on the higher tier DVC resorts. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, moderates need some love too. Right now, it's, it's I'm very curious what they're going to be uh, putting priority to when it comes to the resorts over in Walt Disney World as things open up further. Because... I know that they probably make more money off of the you know higher tier things, but how many how are you higher tier people are you going to really be able to bring out, you know, versus you know the uh, economy and the uh, mid tier? Because I think if we we're going to do like another visit to Walt Disney World when things get better, I think you and I would probably just go for a value resort just for the sake of like saying we did it once. Oh, value, not economy, it's value. That's what it's called. Mm. The, the, the lower tier. Uh, yeah, some of them seem to be fine. And if I'm bringing my whole family, then... Because I think uh, I your family would want to, like, stay at a villa, kind of, like, over example. I I have a feeling at a beach resort, beach and yacht club might be something your family would like. That's their possible. Aesthetics and I, I think... Uh, and you and I can go to forest, the forest. I think forest is... Uh, uh, Fort Wilderness. Fort Wilderness, that's what it's called. Thank you. That's also a good, another good that fit one, for your family, too. That possibly uh, uh, Hotel of the Caribbean. The island one. Island. Uh, the mo yeah, the modern. I forget about uh, Port Royal. It's not Port. It's not Port Royal. But y'all who visit the theme parks know which moderate resort I talk about. Port Royal is uh, location from um, the Caribbean theme Caribbean resort, uh, which might not be available because it's currently housing the NBA. Oh, 
Well, because they're going to continue the NBA season there. One of my, I'm surprised I'm not doing that at All Star Sports Resort. <laughs> I know, right? It makes more sense to me. Um, but I think they want to have them at some place a little bit higher tier than All Star Sports. It also depends where you know who who in my family is going along because I could also see them being like, "Ooh, Art of Animation, that sounds really cool." Uh, so it just depends what family members agree to actually go on the trip. But if I do have family members, yes, I, I think we're not going to be at a value. I think we're going to, although Art of Animation is a value, I think. Yeah, it is a value, and. I, that's one of the hotels I, I, I could be thinking, checking into this weekend because I was considering a value. Yeah, value was going to be a trip after to my save a little bit of, mm-hmm. of cash monies. Because value resorts, they can go from seventy a night to about a hundred a night, which is very reasonable, actually, uh, considering this is this is a Disney property. And heck, I've been to conventions where we can't get a hotel room for a hundred dollars. And at the moderates, so you're, we uh, we're looking at like a uh, two hundred fifty ish on average. Yeah. And we were lucky to score a deal where we got 25% off our hotel plus free dining. Yes. And we are just kind of waiting for things to get better so Disney World can have their fire sales. Like, please come to the park. We have a fire sale. Like, yes. The big thing is, if that happens, say, near the end of the year, I'm wondering what my, like, chances are of convincing any of my family to go and do, like, a Disney World Christmassy kind of thing. Not on Christmas itself. That will be insane. But, I mean, like... Christmas 2021. Yeah. Christmas 2021 might be easier to pull off, yes. Or even in January. I mean, depending when my brother's school semester is. God, it's a lot of logistics to go on, but we don't need to ramble. Up. Now we're rambling too far, even on this. But I do think that... Uh, I think a Princess and the Frog restaurant would be fun. You can have the jazz music playing. You can have uh, some good Southern cooking. Probably a lot easier to pull off in Florida just because people know the kind of cooking that's supposed to be there and people will know what to expect. But they just added that barbecue place, which would kind of cross over a little bit. So I'm not, I don't know. But I I think if we get one over here, we need to revitalize, we need to do a whole story or a whole story, a whole episode here on how to revitalize downtown Disney because downtown Disney feels like a, like a, dying dragon and i just kind of feel sorry for it and i'm like i want to give it a head pat saying, oh i'm sorry puff because that was like the hangout place when you and i were started started dating yeah it was it was a good place so i've I've been to many dates there and uh friend you know just go hang in there friends movies especially when we do like do like movie family stuff like opening weekend of movies so, yeah, it just became one of those places where it used to be the cool place, and now it's like the no place. And that's kind of sad, and I think that would be a good thing to go over next time, or one of these upcoming times. Mm-hmm. And maybe we'll hit up downtown Disney when it opens up again, but eh, let's just kind of see where this all goes. Because <laughs> right now, given how California is right now with coronavirus, I'm like, just kind of a little bit of the one we're going out. Yeah. Any hoot. Wear a mask. All right. Well, thank you for watching. I'm sorry we rambled on on about 200 different subjects this time around. But hey, we did talk with the earnest thing. So the, the title card is not a lie. And we will be back soon because this is our kind of only way of keeping this channel alive right now. Ish. Uh, please check out our uh, description to see ways of supporting the channel. And hopefully when things open up, you will see me back at the parks, not only eating lots of food, but doing all sorts of other crazy things. So until next time, remember, even when you're stuck at home, you can still eat the magic.